Thank you so much for the follows to Completely Missed, Kella Michael, Zachman, Beds, Mulvin, and Yeah, I Am a Nerd. Thank you so much, everyone. Appreciate it. He must be someone I've talked to about other people because his email. Oh boy. And there we go. Ah. I think it's Nicholas Hamilton. All right, let me put that in the notes. Oh, I don't have any background music. Let me switch off some goofy music on. Sorry for you guys. I wasn't expecting to do this today, so it'll be a shorter stream, but I don't want it, so. Okay, let me write down Nicholas Hamilton. I know I didn't tweet about it. Uh, it can do. Okay, so I suspect that um, Scott's just probably going to be too busy to come over here. Hello. Oh. Oh, good. Okay, Scott. Um, wanted you to, to come attend with us because uh, we. This is Bridget Allen. She's one of the people on the medical board um, to do list of people that we need to get assessment with. It was requested by Nicholas Hamilton of the Legal Aid Clinic. So um, I you know, believe, I in particular, it was ordered by a judge that I get this yeah. medical evaluation. Yeah, if you actually look at the docket, I can see a judge did order it. Um, I will grab that judge's name as well, the throne of the court. Justice Thomas. Justice Thomas. Okay, great. I don't think she was quite pleased with my etiquette, I think, on the docket. Yeah, I did notice some concerning things that you had on the docket there. Um... So I understand why they why they ordered this. Um, trying to get a picture of everything. Okay, so uh, we do not have access to like arrest reports or anything of that nature. So why don't we just start with a little bit of like, how did you end up in here? Like, what what happened? Well, I should, I should point out, I need to be careful to, to what I say. My lawyer did advise that I don't speak to you too much about the specifics. He stated that it could just go straight to the court. So, that in mind, I think I will do best to speak to you more vague, just so I don't implicate myself in case the current uh, evidence of the, the police that have may be thrown out. I don't want to give them oh, more. actually, that reminds me. Get her to sign. Yeah, I'm assuming your lawyer didn't get you to sign a HIPAA release, um, since this is a court-ordered thing, right? And you know we're going to share it with um, the lawyers, which would then submit it as evidence, so the prosecution would see it, and the judge will see it as well. Did your lawyer get you to sign a HIPAA yet? No, no, I was just told that anything I do speak here would be shared. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I am, yeah, definitely it will be shared with all those people. It will not be posted on the docket. It will not be made public, um, but it will be within evidence. Um, like, this is HIPAA sealed. But there will be it's on it, obviously, throughout the DOJ system. Um, and, you know, and it will be in the reports in the MDW um, for the DOC, but they are medical reports that are locked only to the medical staff here. Um, can read them. So uh, even our guards out there, just the ones that aren't medically trained, can't even read these reports. So, you know, it's not going to be with professionals here. Otherwise, it's going to be with lawyers and judges. So I just uh, need you to be aware of that. And um, I'll just need you to sign this, uh, this form here. Let me get you this. There you go.
Okie dokie. Alright, and I will file that. Um, just to make sure that everyone is covered up and aware of you know, everything, where the information is going. So, if you want, I mean... We can obviously speak in general terms. You don't have to admit to anything. Um, as far as we were told, um, well, I guess there's what's on the docket, right? Which is the serial assaults and killings. So, um, we can just generalize things about it. But what we're trying I... to kind of get to is sort of your state of mind, um, where you're at with everything. Just get a feel for, you know, how you kind of ended up here. Well, I suppose I could speak and uh, say that I allegedly did certain things. Doesn't necessarily yeah. mean I did them, and it's not an admission of guilt. But allegedly, mm -hmm. I met it. Hmm, how many people, I suppose, at this time? 34 different individuals, 27 here in the city. Okay. So allegedly, 27. Okay. 10 of which uh, were non locals, 17 of which were. Allegedly. Okay, and um, when you did these alleged things, um, I don't know the details or the nature of it, but... Would you like to you know the details? Maybe yeah, I mean, I don't want you to obviously implicate yourself and everything, but I'm trying to kind of understand why you do, why you did these things. Um, and I don't really know, like, you know, what method was it? Just like a single blow thing with a sh like a gun, oh. or were you? I mean, I've met people that eat people. I've met people that steal skin. <laughs> you know, so. I... Well, let's just say I. Uh... Allegedly, of course. Like, to... I wanted to play a game. I wanted people to know my name. I wanted people to... Fear me. But I also wanted to challenge. You know, these police in this city, they are... Well, well trained for the horrible, horrible crimes that occur here. Some might say they're some of the best in the country because of it. So coming here and, and doing such crimes and getting away with it? Well, now that's, that's quite interesting, isn't it? That's someone to talk about. And that's what I did, allegedly, of course. I ensured that people would know who I am, that the police they played a little game with me. We, uh, you know, I would leave, allegedly, of course. And I'm going to say all everything I say here is alleged. But, uh, mm -hmm. little notes for them to solve. Little hints maybe left within, with each corpse left within a jack-o'-lantern. The victim themselves carved with a beautiful little jack-o'-lantern's face on it. You see, it's all about mind games. Even when meeting the victim... The last thing you ask them is their trick or treat. And should they survive? Well, maybe they'll start to wonder what would have had happened had they answered the other. A woman who answered treat found her a death. Had she answered trick, would she still be breathing? And the other can be said, it's all about the mind games you can play. Because those who do survive... Maybe they'll learn a lesson. You see, the victims that I allegedly chose were those who are, how do we say it, too kind for their own good, too vulnerable. They needed to learn a lesson. They needed to learn that their kindness will only bring them misery. And it did. Each individual would offer allegedly, me, a ride to wherever place. I'd give him some sob story. And every single one of them 
would meet their doom. Even Sergeant Anita May found her kindness biting her in the ass. She gave me a nice uh, soda drink in our interrogation. And I found a way to use that straw to give her a nice eye patch. You see, kindness, it doesn't get you anything. It doesn't... There's no benefit to it. It only leaves you vulnerable. That's exactly so what it was. So you're trying to teach them a lesson, but the ones whose lives were allegedly taken, did they have an opportunity to learn a lesson? I don't care about them. They're pawns. They all were. Pieces in a game. But I don't really care what they think. And it just happened to be a, an extra little... Uh... Thank you so much. Uh, so what's most important to you is the game. Oh, the game. The game itself. Leading the officers on a little chase. Can you describe one of the letters that you might have left? Oh, I would love to. See, I had this own... my own cipher. Different letters meaning different symbols. And each note would get harder and harder. Maybe the first one had no no diff no cipher coding. But the next one had a Caesar code. Or it was backwards. And it got harder and harder. And had the police not fallen and played along, they wouldn't have been able to solve them at all. No, see, the police had to play along if they wanted the information. They wanted the hints. They wanted to know what the next victim would be. Who I am. What? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep. I uh, would leave them with plenty to work with. But if they didn't play the game, well, then they don't get the rewards to playing. The final puzzle was going to be left with a body at a lesbian's doorstep. A letter that I had expected them to post to the whole city to have them learn. Learn who had been brought in, bringing fear to them. And had the police decided to work with the civilians and given them the, the information, well then maybe they would have been able to solve that final riddle. It contained my name. You know, the Zodiac, he was uh, quite the interesting man. He used to send letters to the various newspapers in San Francisco. I think I take inspiration from him. Uh, what was his name? The Zodiac Killer. Uh, oh, gosh. So... You have the theme. Um, you did say that you read the final letter. So when the final letter was released, all that happened, did, did you allow yourself to get caught because you reached the final letter? I hadn't reached it. Oh, you hadn't reached it yet. The cops cheated. They didn't let me finish the games. Maybe I got cocky. I made a call the lead investigator on the case. I was able to get her number through some clever work around and gave her a little call, taunting her, making fun of her for not finding the map that I had made for her. And sure enough, they caught me, but I don't mind. For when my trial comes, I'll make sure everyone knows who I am. I'll make sure they know. Are you still planning out this final, this final piece of the game? Do you still f feel like a need, a compulsion to finish it? It would be nice to finish it, but I think at this point they know who I am. Now I have something bigger planned. Something more extravagant.
Tell me, Doctor, do you like Halloween movies? Um, like the actual Halloween? Oh, any Jason? of them. Or just, okay. Yeah, I mean, I like scary movies. I don't care for the Halloween. But, like, I like uh, the Jason ones. I find them quite entertaining. They were some of the only entertainment I had growing up. It's interesting you know. that you find Jason Voorhees to be an interesting character. He never left cryptic letters. He just did his job and didn't care for the notoriety. No, I wasn't. I don't think he's any sort of icon to follow. I'd like more of the fear that he brought. Yeah. You watched a lot of these growing up. Um, did you grow up like with your mom around? Your mom and dad? Uh, your both my parents were around. They were. Let's just say my father was a pastor, my mother the leader of the choir. They were extremely overbearing on the sort of things that I could watch growing up. I wasn't even allowed out on Halloween, I was told to stay inside. Though the parents, uh, you know, would go out and preach during the trick-or-treaters. That gave me plenty of time to sneak to the local blockbuster, pick up a few movies, and watch them at home. Without them knowing what you <laughs> Of course not. Watching. They would never have allowed it. <laughs> they barely allowed me to have any friends growing up. But you don't need friends. I'm curious what... Um where did you get your attraction to, to go and pick up those kind of movies? Sorry, say that again? Well, where did you get the idea to pick up those kind of movies? Most children in a household like that would probably get something, you know, maybe a nice Disney movie or an action movie. What, what, what attracted you to the horror movies? Well, Halloween is frowned upon in my family. It's, uh, too pagan for their minds. Did you often seek out things that were not traditionally allowed in your household? Of course. If they were hiding it from me, there must have been a reason. Was, uh, was your family Jehovah Witness? No, Catholic. Hmm. They were against Halloween still. Hmm. Yes, they were quite traditionalist. We, um, the place we come from, it's... There's still a group of people who are quite against the sort of pagan arts. Now, I don't practice them myself, but I do find some of their tenets interesting. Did you know what jack-o'-lanterns were originally made for? I believe they were made to sort of your from home for the Exactly. Night. So what happens when you make the body a jack-o'-lantern? Does the spirit ever get to escape? Maybe the spirit already escaped. Well, here's a question. Did you make it a jack-o'-lantern after they were dead or before you killed them? Were they still alive when you were doing it? Allegedly. Oh. Well, allegedly, where would be the fun in carving just a dead body? Hmm. No, no, they were alive. Uh, I have a question for you here. Oh. Uh, Around what age did you start uh, like going to the blockbuster and picking up these movies? <sighs> I suppose. Let's see here. I was definitely under 10. To be honest with you, I don't have much memory of the chi my childhood. I got to... What I do remember was sleeping in a box at night if I broke any of the rules. I, I couldn't tell you. No, I... Those are the few things I remember watching the movies, but time... It, I don't know. I, I, I don't seem to have any real recollection of it. 
Though I do remember an event from my teenage years. That was quite fun. Tell us about that. Well, um, when I was 16, there was a fire at the church. It was a real shame. Everyone inside burning. Seven people would lose their lives, including my parents. Maybe they would have made it out safely had the doors not been blockaded. What happened after your parents died? Were you taken in by a family member? Or were you taken to a home? I fended for Did myself. You really, really quick, oh, back up. Do you know who blocked the doors? <laughs> I think you know the answer to that, Doctor. Um, yes, okay. This isn't necessarily the end of Bridget yet, Tony. Okay, go ahead with Bert's question, sir. I live mostly on my own. I don't need other people. No one really needs other people. The only person you can trust is yourself. Especially when you're me. When you were younger, did you ever hurt any animals or anything sort of innocent and kind and natured? Like Nature's not kind, let's be honest. I mean, yeah, of course. I mean, who, who never made little birdhouses with little traps inside of them? I think every kid does that. Have you ever felt... Um, regret for what, anything you've done or any empathy towards anyone. Uh, maybe you've met someone in your position who grew up in a very overbearing house as well. Do you feel any empathy or anything towards anyone? I assure you, Doctor, there's nothing to be regretful for. Maybe when you were in the box. You say cry. Mm -hmm. No, I don't believe I have. Maybe as a child, but I don't remember it. Ah, sure, I'll feel anger, of course. I mean, who doesn't get angry? Do you ever feel happy? Oh, most certainly. Brings happiness to carve my knife. And you've been alone the entire time. You've never had a relationship with anyone? No, the only relationship I had was with my parents. They used to make fun of me for my emotions. So that I'd get too happy or too sad. But I... I disagree. I don't think that's the case. I don't think that's the possible... Uh, I don't think it's true. I don't think you can... I don't think I'm someone who would succumb to such emotions. And, uh, what about sexual desires? Have you ever had sex? Have you ever had the want to have sex? Why would anyone want that sort of barbaric thing? It's just a waste of time. Hmm, 
No, I think human attraction is deplorable. It's a weakness. And from when you first can remember, first memory when you were younger, have you kind of felt that they, you don't, you don't really remember like ever crying, you don't remember, you just kind of felt this way always, right? I don't know, I suppose I get overly happy, but I don't cry, I don't think I've ever cried. I'll get down, I'll get fearful, but I won't cry. Crying is a sign of weakness, I suppose. When you feel down, is it fearful? Or do you actually feel, like, depressed, sad? I don't know. I don't like to think about it, I suppose. I understand. I understand. Um, tell me a little bit about this box that you were kept in. It was a punishment box if I broke from the way of the Lord. When my parents found out about my little birdhouse, the one with the mouse traps inside of it, they'd put me in the box. Was a box made of wood? What was it made of? Cardboard. And it was oh. never changed. It was always the same. The same old moldy box. How long would you be left in the box when you when you were in trouble? Thirty minutes, an hour, a whole evening, overnight. It depends if they remembered to get me back. being made of cardboard, you probably had the strength just to break out of it. Did you ever think about doing that? I did once. And I never did it again. What, what happened? Were all of your punishments, um, was, was it all always because of something against uh, your parents' religion? Or like, what if you did something like you didn't make your bed or something? Would they put you in the box for that? Anything that upset them. They told me I'd be failing God or failing them, failing my family. But even if I knocked over something, they would box and I would go. Did they ever give you a chance to explain what happened or did you get to say that it was an accident to them or did they just go right to putting you in at the box? No. I was told I could explain myself to the Lord. Only the box. Was there any other punishment that was given? you fidgeting with your watch there. What could you tell me about those marks? The, the, the scars. Who gave you those scars? People who are dead. What about this watch itself? Is it sentimental to you? No, it's just something I found here. It's just, um... Uh, 
It's just something I, I just, I don't know. It's something to focus on. To get distracted. I, 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 I guess. Do you ever hear voices telling you to do things? No. No, I don't. There's a few things we want to touch base on still. All right. It seems like you do understand your case. Like, you understand the alleged crimes that you've been accused of, right? Do you understand, like, how the court system works? That you can, that you can put in plea agreements? Um, you understand what it means to go they, to trial? They offered me a plea agreement. They want some sort of information. That they think I know. What kind of information are they looking for? Something you did or someone else? Um, someone else. Someone. Someone else. They said if I if I don't cooperate with them, they will uh, um, kill me. Is this someone that you've been working with? No, I have... They're just... They think I know something. Why would they think you know something? Because I mentioned that they know who I am. Of course they do. You do Of course they know who I am. <laughs> I mean, the kills that I did... Which serial killer wouldn't be envious of them? So you do understand that you could be facing the death penalty during this trial. Which, if you gave them the information and did a plea agreement, you'd be, like, guaranteed not to die and, I guess, be in custody here. But what do you see is more likely than their death? A trial or giving them information for this person? Um, I, 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 I think the, the trial probably is more likely. I don't think I can give them the information that they want. Have you told your lawyer this and had them communicate that back? Yes, but he stated that it would be unwise for them to know that. Hmm. This is the lawyer we talked about in the beginning, right? Yes. Because if you don't have the information they're looking for... It doesn't matter. They said they want all I know. That's what they stated. They want everything I know. Hmm. And if I don't know yeah, it, so then I don't know it. And, but did you look? Go, did you ask her to go get them and tell them like you don't know it? You know, like make it kind of clear. I think he has, to an extent. Okay. And if it goes to trial, well, then it goes to trial. I think people will understand. You see, the trial would bring a spotlight to what I've done. Every single person who lost their life would be brought forward as evidence. The method of their kills mentioned to the court. And the public. Well, the public might be there. And the public would learn. They could learn what I've done. And then the whole city could begin to fear. But they would know my name. They know who I am. That if I die, I... 
Well. The Infinity Killer died. Look where his name is now. People fear him. Fear the idea of him. You know, when I did those kills, I had a mask on. I was quite fond of it. What does that look like? This mask. Oh. Hmm. It's very frightening. I thought so. I thought it was quite fun, quite festive. When you do the kills of your actions or whatever it may be, maybe even the night of the fire at the church, did these all happen in October? Did you stick with the Halloween theme? The church burned down the first Sunday of October, yes, but the alleged kills weren't somewhere in September, yeah, but they were all trick-or-treat themed. I believe they called me the trick-or-treat killer. So would you ever do anything outside of October? If an opportunity showed oh, up? Oh, I do have an idea for December. You know, there's a really good Halloween movie that can fit in December as well. I, uh, yeah, actually, there is some, there is some December Halloween movies, I know which one you're talking about, too. There's a couple of them. I think it uh, would be I... quite fun to make the officers who put me in here. I don't know, maybe it would be my fun to make them fear something. Allegedly, of course, I would never do such a thing, but if I were to, I think it might be fun. Um, shoot, what was I going to ask? Oh, right. I saw on the docket that you were initially trying to represent yourself. So, does that mean you have knowledge of how, like, the court system works? How to, like, speak in court and everything? It doesn't matter. I'm just representing myself. I don't... I don't need a lawyer. I don't need anyone. I don't need you. I'm only here because I have to be. Okay. But, so you understand... You would understand enough in the courtroom... Um, I, would have done my, and... I would have done my research. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, I think for now, for my end, that's all, all the questions I have, and, um, I apologize, I, uh, didn't really explain the, uh, logistics of this at the beginning. So what we're trying to do to make sure that everyone has a fair, um, assessment, especially when to reverse the death penalty, we want to, really want to be thorough. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to do more than one therapist. Um, be present at assessments and ideally we're trying to do two or three assessments however we understand you know issues people with waking up and everything like it, it's a hope uh, we'll see if we can maybe do another one with you we'll see what can work up um, so you understand and I should have I apologize for not explaining in the beginning why there's three of us here um, it's because we kind of want to all kind of get a picture of what's going on hear from you and then we kind of make our own notes um, and compare a little bit just to make sure that there's no one bias of one therapist um, so that's why there's a there's three of us here well are you impressed then at the killings allegedly I'm not very interested in the killings and it don't find them impressive. I'm interested in you and the reason why you actually did the killings. 
Oh, that's boring, I suppose. It's a shame. Is it... Uh, is it that you want to impress people with your killings? Yeah, of course. I mean, notoriety is the spice of life. How impressive to you growing up? Was it the characters in the Halloween movies? Was there anybody else that inspired you? The fear inspired me. The power. And where, and where did you learn that fear was something that should be respected? In those movies, they feared the villain. Or the hero, I suppose. Depends on how you look at it. They feared them. They were the center of it all. They knew whatever they did, it wouldn't matter. Because in the end, they would get caught. They would die. And that's the fear that I like. But I want people to know who I am. I was never given that chance as a child. And what's the easiest way to get people to know who you are? For the police to care about you? Well... I think that's quite obvious. So you want the police to care about you? Oh, they certainly did, didn't they? They played my game, solved my puzzles. Oh, for what? Was for... that always your goal to get caught? I was going to give them my name in the end, but I had intended to hide away at the end and wait until next October. Just keep going and going. Become sort of a um, urban legend. Something you tell your kids to watch out for on Halloween. And when I get out of here, I will become that. So, you know... Um, you probably felt like you never really impressed your parents, and they were always kind of treating you as a disappointment. So is that why you started, like, doing all this? Because you want someone to be proud of you for something? Seeking that insurance? I mean, um, just, I mean, they don't, they, they were too busy for me. Except when they were punishing me, they gave me plenty of tension then, but I am. Um, they, um. Why do we have to talk about them? Can't we talk about my victims? Uh, alleged victims, or. I don't know, something else. Uh, could you repeat what you said? Sorry, voice caught. Uh, but wh why, why do we have to talk about my parents? They, they, we don't need to talk about them. They could talk about my victims, alleged victims, or, you know, the cops, or something else, preferably. Well, parents, oh, you grew up with them, they have a big impact on your, your life and your psyche, and... This might mean nothing to me. I don't care a lot about of them. Your developmental years with them, so they're 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 important here. It also seems like you're trying to put the police officers as a replacement for your parents. Your parents didn't give you. I mean, I don't know. I I guess maybe. Look, I just, I don't want to die, all right? I don't. But they also threatened to be put me in, in some sort of hole they mentioned. I, maximum security, it sounds horrible. Walked away. You understand that your victims didn't want to die either, right? Who cares about them? They were pawns, they were weak. You know, 
the fawn at the side of the road who's been hit by a car. You don't try to nurse it back to health. You kill it for mercy. Because it was weak enough to get hit. Just like the victims were weak enough to get trapped. It's survival of the fittest. When Noah built an ark, he only brought the strongest. He let the rest to die. And all those lives died. Because they were not good enough. Just like Cain with Abel. It comes down to strength. Strength of will, strength of mind, strength of body. You can't show signs of weakness. I don't deserve to die because I am one of the stronger ones. I was able to withstand what I went through as a child. Well, you know, in some situations, or back in pretty hard times. You're going to have to repeat that. Um, in some situations, if, if we were back in prehistoric times, right, if you were going around killing, like, the gatherers, because they were usually the weaker ones, you might find that the whole tribe turns against you and kills you, because you're a loose cannon. I'm not a loose cannon, I am a weapon of war focused on those who are weak. Why do you see something like a generosity and somebody giving you a ride at the form of weakness? Because you're making yourself vulnerable to these sorts of things. I think anyone who is able to get themselves in a situation that makes them able to be killed by someone like me, then they deserve to lose their life. Everybody's vulnerable all the time. A meteorite could crash into us right now, right? So, how then does generosity that make sense? That is the will of the gods. Are you enacting something for the gods? No, I don't give a shit about them. But. You, you seem to. They have power. I respect it. But I don't serve them. I don't serve anyone. Like, Anita May is actually quite... She's one of the strong ones. She would be one of the ones to survive and survive the fittest. Well, she made herself vulnerable in giving me a weapon. Leaving me uncuffed. And if I am going to live my life in here, I'll make sure I'm at the top of the food chain as well. With all the other killers in here. I noticed it's been quite popular here for killers. I met a few the other day. They're all interesting in their own way. See, those, those are the strong ones. People like Jocelyn, like May, like Lizzie Byrne. They are the strong ones. They are the ones who deserve to stay out on top. Um, so, I mean, oh, one second, um, sidebar on the question. Um, do you talk to Jocelyn very much, very often? I've spoken to her a couple times now. I just told you about uh, the stuff she's done. More or less, but I would like to learn more. Okay, sorry, Bert. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, that, that was a good question. Um, I was just gonna say, I mean, you're you're under you know, a guard and you're a street therapist and talk. I, I would say that 
you're in a pretty vulnerable vulnerable position yourself. Do you see yourself as somebody weak in your current state? I make do with what I can. I adapt, I evolve. Okay. The way I see it, the reason there's a guard here is because you're fearful of me. Fearful of what I could do. Well, um, Scott's is a guard, but he's also, um, medical, medically in sight. So, he's actually here, uh, for the assessment as well. Because, uh, we do have some guards that are medically trained here. Um, can you guys still hear me? I can hear you. Yes. Okay, just making sure. I, I know just the thinking. city's been a little bit weird lately, so I'm just checking the silence. Um, sorry. Is there anything you'd like to ask us? I find this whole psych evaluation pointless. I'm fine. I don't have any sort of mental illnesses like you might think I do. No traumas or anything like that. Our main goal uh, with these evaluations is to figure out if you are fit for court. If you understand um, the proceedings, you understand, you know, what you've been charged with. Um, which is you represent yourself, so. You seem to be pretty aware Wait, of that. so let me understand this. If I'm not fit for court, they can't try me. Um, so. They can. It's just it's handled in a different way. But uh, it would you wouldn't be there in the court. Um, mm -hmm. you do, but sometimes it's I assure you I am perfectly process. fine. I would love to see Sir Sergeant May again. I'm sure she would love to see me sitting across from her table in the courtroom. But on top of the fit or not, we would provide them any initial findings uh, we have as well regarding, you know, um, what's going on with you. Uh, well, there's nothing going on with me, doctor. I'm perfectly fine. You didn't mention that you have, like, these highs, right? Okay, yeah. For instance, any ch any person has happy moments and sad moments. When these happy moments happen, do you have a lot of energy? Are you like sure. overabundance? I mean, sure, yes. Why? And when and when you crash out from those moments, when you go back down, feeling maybe a little bit depressed or whatever it might be. Do you find it been hard to, like, leave the house? Yes, so? Why? I mean, it could be initial, um, findings. We'd have to, of course, talk to you, but so we can't medicate it. that. It, these are typical of my bipolar disorder. Hell yeah, she's got she, 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 she knows her shit. Um, which, there is medication available for that to kind of uh, level you out so you don't hit so low you know um, I don't need medication I don't need I don't have any sort of disorder a lot of people who experience these highs and lows really don't like the lows and that's the point of bringing the medication to kind of even it all out so you don't have to experience those horrible low times you know when you just don't even feel like getting up If it's an option, we can explore some more later. Um, 
But uh, I want to put it out there for you to consider, sleep on it. If you do want to start any sort of medications for stuff like that, just let us know. Because in here, if you hit one of those lows, we have strong people, some strong women in here like Lizzie or Jocelyn. That would be a good time for them to take advantage and uh, do something to you, you know? It's dangerous to have lows in a prison. Definitely leave you vulnerable. So sleep on it. Consider it. We can always talk some more about it. I do okay. think it would be... You to protect yourself. Okay, well, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll think about it, I suppose. Yeah, think on it. While you're thinking on it, if a low does happen, and if you do feel unsafe, and if you still haven't really made a decision yet on medication, uh, just let us know. Yeah, I'm sure we can always arrange for you to um, be a back sec or something while you ride out your low. It would be a special case situation. They wouldn't want to do it all the time, but, uh, you know, I want to make sure that you're safe as well if uh, it does happen and uh, if you haven't made a decision on medication yet. All right? Okay, Doc. Thanks, I suppose. <laughs> yes, sir. Is there anything else that you need from me? I think I'm okay. What about uh, Bert I, Scott's? I have no more questions for now, but I would really like to the opportunity to talk again after we've processed some of this. Mm -hmm. You'd definitely like it to follow. Yeah, if we can arrange it and set it up again, um, I think it would be good to at least have one more talk before uh, you go into the trial. There is no date set for you, so you, we do have some leeway time, but if the judge pushes anything, um, which sometimes happened last minute, we'll try to we'll work with what we got, you know? Uh, a lot of people involved, so. Okay. All right, uh, th th thank you, I, I suppose. Yeah, and just know, you know, we do care about you guys, we don't want anyone to hurt and everything while trying to help you sort through everything so if you do need anything you know just find us all right but i don't need it i don't need help I'm... whatever oh i mean everyone needs something you need food you need water like yeah. it's you need some stuff sometimes some people need something special All right. All right. Well, let's get you back out of here so you're not locked in the uh, office all day, all night. <laughs> oh, more handprints. Nice, nice. You go ahead. And uh, we'll uh, open back up the gym below as well. and uh, do whatever you want to do. Go for a run, you know, walk about. And uh, if you need anything, just uh, come find us. All right. Speaking of this. Yeah. Yeah. Good night. All right. Good night. Good night.
All right, I wanted to give you guys that so you guys have that. We're gonna go raid, um... Dude, where's the fucking showers? I think these are the showers? Yeah. We're gonna raid, um... We're gonna go raid, um... Uh, Fluoro? Fluoro? Flu... Flurio? Flurio? The person who plays the doctor that we just spoke to, Dr. Quinn. We'll go give her a raid. Give her lots of love. Oh shit, it wasn't subscriber only chat? I am so sorry. I didn't know it was in sub only. Oh, no it's not. Okay, we're gonna go raid her. Let's go give her some love. Lots of love, everyone. Thank you for stopping by.